Ahoy sailors! Today at the Northman Sailing Channel we are getting back to Finike Marina Tuki in order to prepare our big A sail and assemble all the necessary gear for the sailing test. If you haven't already, please take a look at our previous video about setting up NS 2.5 top-down furlough to a Geno Sun Odyssey 409 and using it to furlough a Code Zero sail. You can find all the components needed to build your own furlough system as well as best prices at our website link shown in the description. This is the project file of our asymmetrical spinnaker. It has the sail area of 145 square meters. That's what Juno recommends for the 409 model and I should say it is rather a large sail for a cruiser as compared to the chutes of 100-120 square meters typically found on 40 feet boats. It is also the sailmakers who tend to keep the area moderate for easy handling and easy furling. Let me remind you how a top-down system is working. The rotation is transferred from the drum to the top swivel by means of a soft stay made out of a special anti-torsion cable. The sim begins furling from the top in order to gather the main girth of the sail first, while the tack is held in place by a swiveling ring on the drum. The torque stay is what we are going to measure and assemble now. Fortunately. We don't have to do all the job on the boat, because there is a workshop nearby which we can use. Our special thanks to Captain Faik Osturk. The stage one is to clamp one side of the cable and insert a thimble in it. It is highly recommended to have a bench vise at hand, especially for dealing with thicker cables like this 13mm one. We are starting by pressing the cable together to determine the required length of the table to fit the thimble, the clamp body and the heat shrink tubing. When assembling the rope clamp, do not forget to use some soft spacing material to protect the coating from scratches. First, we install corner screws and then locking screws that puncture into the rope for better holding. Gradually and evenly turn the screws but do not force them if they are going too hard. You will be able to resolve this in a bit. Now, we have to get back to the boat to finish one end of the cable, fit the heat shrink tube and make further measurements. Should you have some difficulties while tightening the screws, you might drill a tiny hole in the rope to ease the screw's movement. Please be careful not to damage the thread or drill too much. You may use a thread locker to fix all the screws at the first cable end, but as for the second one, we would recommend applying the Loctite only after the test sail, when fully confident that the system is working right. The heat gun is best to settle the heat shrink, but you can use a lighter or a propane stove. To determine the correct length of our soft stay, we are going to hoist it by the finished end. As a great alternative to Harken ESP series blocks, we have installed a new NS 57mm aluminum ball bearing block to operate the Spinnaker Halyard. Having released the Halyard jammer in the cockpit, we are ready to attach the thimble to the top swivel. Every NS furler and swivel feature a special channel to insert a safety line, which prevents the pin and its retainers from falling out. The easiest way to raise the soft stain now is to ask one of the crew members to pull the halyard from the cockpit while you will be on the bow helping the torque cable to unwind. One of the stays going up, it is a good practice to manually defer the rope from the mast so that the top swivel would not bump into the rigging too much. Once the swivel is completely hoisted, you should give out about 20 cm of spare halyard and lock the jammer. After that, you can stretch the anti-torsion cable by putting it through the furless drum jaw. Pull the cable as much as you can and mark the desired thimble position with an isolation or masking tape. The next step is to take the cable down and return to the workshop to finish the job. 
Sometimes it's quite tricky to align the parts of the clamp properly. You might even need several attempts or different positions to do that. If you are sure of the required self stay length, you can of course order this work to be done and we will do it along with the splicing of the continuous line. Usually, before cutting the tail, we recommend doing one more trial hoist on the boat. Use your halyard winch to give the system a full tension as if it were in operation. As soon as everything is ok, we may now fix all the screws with a thread locker and tighten them. Surprisingly, we discovered that the serrated bread knife is the best tool to cut the anti-torsion cable, but you may use a hacksaw or a very sharp knife if an electric rope cutter is not available. Now burn the tip of the cable and remove any excess like parts of the internal anti-torque monofilament. Use your head gun to settle the heat shrink tubing and you are ready to go. As this is the first time we hoist the sim, it is better to do all the preparations in the marina without any hassle. Like we have already mentioned, it is better to use the inside jibe lead of the sheets with the furler. First you have to lead one sheet around the forestay and lay both sheets on the deck underneath of everything. Then goes the sail at all of the sheets. After that you unwind the torque cable coil and stretch it above the sail, clipping the lower end to the drum jaw. Now you can attach sheets to the clue. The head of the spinnaker is typically lashed to the soft stay thimble which is fastened to the top swivel on the spinnaker halyard. It is really important to make sure that your spinnaker is not twisted and all the sides are free. As for the tack, we are going to attach it before the hoist to the short pennant that we have already tied to the top down ring on the fellow's drum. Once again, the tack pennant should be atop of the sheet and under the torque cable. Before hoisting your sim, the bolt should be running as far downwind as possible in order to cover the janaker with the main sail. Get everything ready in the cockpit and take your spinnaker out of the fore hatch. As you can see, we did our best to choose a very light wind day for the first setting of the sail. Of course, it is easier to have at least two people on board. While one crew is pulling the halyard, the other should control the sail and all the ropes during the entire race. As soon as the soft stay is fully tensioned, you can head up a little bit to catch the wind with the sail. If the rope work was done correctly, Everything should be ok by now and you should be enjoying pretty fast downwind sailing. Next time, all the thing is going to be way easier. Just take out the rolled sail, attach the soft stay and the sheets and hoist the spinnaker ready to be unfurled. That is how the top down ring performs underway, moving the spinnaker tack forward. Controlling the loft movement is essential for effective asim handling. With some practice you will know when to bear away or head up, when to lose the sheet and when to tighten it. Even with the light air, a larger sim delivers an impressive amount of power to the boat, letting you do sailing instead of motoring. When you are preparing to jab again, you would want the boat running as deep as possible. The best way is to have one crew at the control line the other one at the sheets and an autopilot steering the boat. While the sail is rolled up, you can do the jibe under the main alone and then unfurl the spinnaker on the opposite tack with one crew paying out the continuous loop and the other pulling the sheet. As the sail is free you can turn to the wind as much as you need to feel the sail. Every time you furl the sail will be slightly different from the other. You will need to gradually develop a personal technique of depowering your chute. If you have a mast top asymmetrical spinnaker as we do, some wind will remain in it even on the dead drum. You will very likely have to lose the sheet all the way so that the sail would flag forward for the ease of furling. If you are single handing, I just don't want too much hassle, you should probably take into account some guidelines. Let us compare two real sail projects made for our boat. 
First of all, the spinnaker on the left is 20 square meters smaller and less demanding. Secondly, its spinnaker half width to the foot ratio is 85% as compared to more than 100 that the red one has. Altogether, it means that the white spinnaker will be more straightforward to operate. The dark laminate insert in the loft is the modern cableless technology, allowing the use of a regular Code Zero furler for SIM spinnakers. Such sails do not require a soft stay, but their SHW is quite restricted. Moreover, the laminated sail cloth has a very limited lifespan, especially considering frequent and prolonged periods of straining caused by furling and unfurling. A regular spinnaker of nylon sailcloth, on the other hand, is more reliable and lighter. It allows for larger sizing as well as the mentioned ratio. Obviously, you will need a top-down system and a soft stay instead of just a plain cut zero furler. After all, both sail options will be a great addition to a belt's wardrobe. Asymmetrical spinnakers are enabling you to sail in a much wider array of weather conditions and wind directions. It is entirely personal choice to get a more convenient spinnaker or a more powerful one. Everyone should carefully consider the priorities as well as the sailboard specifics. From our side, we are always ready to help you pick up the most suitable furlan system. Feel free to contact us and we will be happy to supply you with everything you need for the best furlan experience. Give us thumbs up and subscribe to the Northman Sailing channel. Bye!